The New England Patriots taking on the Atlanta Falcons. And we have got ourselves a crucial three-week period, or because the Patriots kick things off tonight, they will be playing three games in the next 17 days, and they are what we would call huge. For a team that came in this season with a rookie quarterback and a whole bunch of free agents trying to figure out the Patriot way, doing your job, all sorts of business like that. And the New England Patriots lost their first game. They had their get-right game against the Jets and then lost the next couple and started out one and three. They started out two and four. That's how they started off. They lost four of their first six. But their third loss, the one at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady was the okay. That was the okay. All right. We see you. We see you. You almost pulled it off, but, you know, Tom came home and it was a weird game. It was a, you know, a homecoming slash, you know, renew, re, re, uh, renewing acquaintances or also reliving the divorce, you know, and it was a weird weekend, but the Patriots had a kick lined up to win that thing. You know, Brady could have obviously had enough time on the clock to win it, but it was that game, then going to Houston and stumbling in that game, but still coming out with the win, and then it was the game against the Dallas Cowboys that overtime took place in, and Dallas won it, and the Patriots haven't lost since. Now, I have been pounding this table ever since the Patriots pounded the Jets and followed that up with a win up the road in SoFi Stadium on Halloween. And I, I was right there. My whole family was there. Took the kids to see their favorite NFL team, Susie's favorite NFL team. They saw it, and I saw what I saw. I saw a, a playoff team. I saw a team that was once again opportunistic on defense with a pick six to seal things and then situationally smart football and a quarterback that was playing within the construct of the offense and making plays and a coach who's coaching them all up. And I'm like, that's a playoff team. And then we saw what the follow-up was to that most recently, a pounding of the Cleveland Browns. And they've won four in a row. And I've seen the responses locally from Boston because my brother-in-law, Scott, tells me everything that they're saying on the radio. <laughs> and, you know, and it's Scott. just like national media talking. Like one guy from Barstool said it was bourbon for the soul, right? Yeah, yep. I saw that one. Yep. Uh, but I also saw the typical Boston stuff, which is, you know, national TV guy, radio guy, overrates our home team that we love to crap on, so please listen to us every day. <laughs> I see it and hear it. <laughs> Streets but talking. this is a playoff team. This is a playoff team. Let's go. And I have been pounding the te desk to say, if you do not believe that they're a contender now, you just don't want to believe it, what you're seeing. Tonight, though, is where rubber begins to meet the road. Short week game on the road. Short Falcons have been up and down, and they just got pounded by the Cowboys. And it does play into the other things that I'm hearing from Boston as well as on my Twitter feed from a, lo a lot of people who are like, hey, who have they beaten? Again, put up their schedule one more time. Who have they beaten? Jets, Chargers, at Carolina, where this was a Sam Donald seeing ghosts game. They knocked him out. Actually, they interestingly enough, uh, you could say that this was uh, uh, another – this was a solid that they did for Cam. If they did him dirty, if you think they did him dirty during the summer by releasing him and just going straight with Mac Jones, I guess they did him a solid by knocking Darnold out for several weeks and got Carolina to call him. <laughs> right. <laughs> they made him a free agent and then got him a job, essentially. <laughs> and then Cleveland, they pound them. Who have they, who have they beat? <laughs> and tonight, even if they beat the Patriots, the Patriots beat the Falcons, which I do believe they will tonight on week 11 on the triple cast, who have they beaten? I think that's kind of fair to ask that question. You, I, I hear it, but you still have to beat the teams in front of you. And even if just who have they beaten? It's the NFL. These are grown-ass men who want to put food on the table, who have jobs to continue and try and hold on to and win, maybe. Who have they beaten? Jacksonville beat the Bills, right? 
Denver beats Dallas. How many times do you see those things happen to other teams? But it hasn't happened to the Patriots in over a month, period. Win, losing it all. And their last two losses were against the defending Super Bowl champs that brought Brady into their house. All sorts of stuff going on. And a lot of people thinking the one reliable NF NFC team that's out there amongst a lot of up and down great teams or teams of great records, Dallas. But the two after that, that's it. Win tonight. New England would take a five-game winning streak into their home contest against Tennessee, which we're assuming will take a seven-game winning streak into that game because they're taking on the Houston Texans this weekend, Tennessee. And then they're at Buffalo on a Monday night. Two of their next three games will be the entire country sitting down tonight to watch against Atlanta. And then after their huge home game against the current AFC leaders and Tennessee will be that going into that game. Even if they lose somehow against Houston, they've got a game and a half lead on Baltimore. And New England. Yep, six win teams and the Chiefs. But then there's that game at Buffalo on a Monday night. Here we go. Next three weeks, next 17 days, starting from tonight, is when we will find out what I believe is going to be the case. Patriots are a team to be reckoned with now. Now. Then again, Atlanta could do the Jekyll and Hyde thing that we've seen from them. <laughs> You know, check check out Atlanta's record. Check out Atlanta's schedule. Seriously. I mean, that home, I, I remember after week one, I said the worst loss of week one was Atlanta's at home to Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni, 32-6. to six. It was like, what was that? They go to Tampa, and they did their usual thing against Tampa, which is play them tough. And then Brady said, screw this, and then scored, I do believe, the last three touchdowns, four touchdowns unanswered. A home win against the Giants that was close. A loss on the road to the Washington football team. They're one and three, but they win their next two. They win their London game against the Jets. Kyle Pitts finally got in the end zone in that one. On a bye week, they come back and they beat Miami. In a crazy one where that was too close for comfort. Carolina, they lose that one at home. And that was close. They could have won that one. And then they're at New Orleans. <laughs> they, they had they had an 18 point lead in that one and and the Saints came back but Matt Ryan went up top to court Daryl Patterson set up coup for the game winner they won at New Orleans only to get a 40 point loss handed to them at Dallas shrug emoji court Daryl Patterson's a game time decision tonight will he play against the team that was the first one to kind of figure out he can he can do more things than just catch the football. Now that he was their lead running back, he was their red zone running back for a while in New England. Sure was. If he doesn't go tonight, I think that's a wrap. Even if he does go tonight, I mean he he couldn't finish the game in Dallas. Maybe it was just like he's dinged up. What do we need him for? We're getting our ass kicked. I don't know what it was like. We'll see. Big game time decision tonight for Atlanta, which needs this football game. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.